Let's be real for a second here. There are lots of difficult ways you could change your life or your health. You could start working out four or five hours a week. You could start changing your diet on a daily basis. Drink a little bit less and maybe drink a little bit less coffee too. That all is hard work. Now in this video, I thought I would share eight simple practices or daily rituals you can do from traditional Chinese medicine that can often make you healthier and potentially help you live longer. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master of the Day. Hack number one is drink Pu'er tea instead of coffee. Now I know this is heretical for a lot of you, but maybe you could just do one coffee in the morning and then a Pu'er tea in the afternoon. So what is Pu'er tea? Pu'er tea is a fermented tea cake. You can see the one that I have here is really pressed and it really is aged a lot like wine is aged. The reason why I suggest Pu'er is that poor is great for building your microbiome. Everyone has digestive problems today, and poor is a great tea that we say drains dampness. So symptoms like bloating, excessive fullness, that kind of thing, poor tea is really, really good for. And it's quite tasty, it's dark and it's earthy, so it's closer to coffee than, for example, green tea. Hack number two is do a two minute monk's breath when stressed. So I'll never forget working with this Qigong teacher in China. When he would go through the sequence of the Qigong form, he would always say the same thing first, which has stuck with me to this day. He said, the first thing we do, we straighten the spine, the head is pulling from a string, and then just lengthen the breath. There wasn't yet a specific instruction to inhale to the count of four and hold to the count of four. He just said, lengthen the breath. And that has become something that has been very, very helpful for me these days because you'll find yourself in the middle of a stressful day and you're like, why are my hands cold? Why am I feeling tight everywhere? Why do I have a headache? And then while you're working, you can either just do two minutes, lengthen the breath. So if right now my breath is every two seconds, I can go, lengthen it and lengthen the exhale. That was already twice as long as my normal breath while I've been talking here. And that's why I'm cold. And that's why I'm feeling this elevated stress response, right? Lengthening the breath is a very simple method for getting your body out of fight or flight, the sympathetic dominant mode, and getting your body into rest and digest the parasympathetic. Breathing being the absolute fastest way to alter your physiology, short of doing a workout or putting a substance in your body. So breathing in Qigong is one of the four daily rituals that traditional East Asian medicine has said can lengthen your life. I've put together a free guide below, it's the first link, on three other daily rituals that can also help you from a TCM point of view. So you guys can check it out down below, it's a free download, and it also goes into a very neat case study of a guy who was very, very long lived as well as the specific practices he did every day. So check it out. Another example of a ritual that was taught to me by a, a monk, she called emotional cleansing. And basically what she said is, you want to try to generate each emotion on your face. We often get stuck in certain patterns, right? Like when I'm working and I'm overly stressed, I'm tense, I'm agitated. Some people, when they get overly stressed, they get sad. And some people are overly light and happy-go-lucky and they can't channel those other emotions in a targeted way. This exercise, you try to generate each emotion. So you could even go in the mirror and you first start by smiling. And imagine like a warm opening sensation in the chest, the heart. Then move to agitation or anger. Like really try to be angry. Eyebrows, intention, your jaw, Get really angry, then generate sadness to the point of generating a tear. Think of a thought, think of a memory, think of something, and just sit there until you see your eyes glass up and see if you can generate a tear. Going through this exercise is considered a kind of emotional cleansing. These correspond to different organs in traditional Chinese medicine. And if you go in through this exercise and try to generate the emotion, it has a cleansing sort of effect. The fourth hack is to supplement with traditional Chinese medicine formulas or herbs. There's a famous doctor named Zhang Kongjing who lived a few hundred years after Christ. And he has this beautiful preface in his book, Treatise on Cold Damage. And the preface at the beginning tells a bit of his story. He says, you know, I lost two thirds of my family due to these epidemics, these pandemics that were going around over the last, I can't remember how many decades, but two thirds of this family died. And he said, this is what inspired me to study medicine and to seek the highest level of mastery. And he has this great line where he says, the mastery of formulas is used for above to treat royalty and kings and the wealthy, in the middle to preserve one's own life and health, and below to help the poor and the sickly. Now, I also shot a recent video on this. I think it's called like my daily TCM herbal formula stack. And I talk about the three formulas I take and why I take them. So it's kind of a neat formula, kind of a behind the scenes of my own life. So check that out if it appeals. Now in my private practice, I specialize in internal medicine and these traditional Chinese medicine formulas. And I do see a limited number of new patients every month in my clinic in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. So if you guys wanna connect and learn more, you can either call my clinic, the link below to learn more, or you can just go to dralexhine.com forward slash clinic. Hack number five is tapping Qigong. 
Now we shot a video here on three acupressure points that are of interest to a lot of people that would help them. And there's one I talked about, which is when you're feeling really bloated or even for women having menstrual pain, you can tap below and alongside the belly button for about five minutes like this, and it will often alleviate that bloating or that pain. Tapping is one of the ways that we say moves chi or moves stagnation. And one example is if you've ever had anxiety and you're feeling that tight chest sensation, you can just tap and then rub a few minutes left rub a few minutes counterclockwise, and you'll often feel much better. Hack number six is fascial stretching. There are lots of sayings in Chinese about when there's blockage or no flow, there's pain. And when there's flow, there's no pain. Now the block can be something as simple as circulation. Fascial stretching is one way to help improve, for example, pain. There are a number of ways you could do this. One is just qigong, right? Lots of qigong forms involve like these slow stretches or overhead. And those are designed to open those meridians or those channels in the body. If we want to reduce it just to muscles, we could just say it stretches the fascia. You can also do that with foam rolling. And you can also do it just by doing, for example, yoga. Hack number seven is to make the heart, the emperor, happy. So we say that the heart is where the emperor resides, right? The emperor is like the lead of the kingdom. And when the emperor is not happy, the whole kingdom better be afraid. When there's a chronic problem that is not being resolved, yes, it could just be the diet. Yes, it could just be they're not sleeping well. But a lot of the time it's that people do not feel connected to any sort of thing that they enjoy. They go for three weeks or a month. They never smile. They don't have anything they look forward to. The advice of a first mentor, he said, you know, after 20 or 30 years, my biggest realization that people need to do something every day that makes them feel happy and makes their heart feel joy. Joy has a powerful effect on the nervous system and the physiology. Find one thing that makes you feel alive because that is a profoundly healing healing impact on the body. And hack number eight, spend 20 minutes per day in solitude. There's a story about Ram Das, the spiritual teacher, about how after he was expelled from Harvard, he began doing psilocybin mushrooms, magic mushrooms, because he said he felt this euphoria, this kind of love and peace of God. But he's like, after I would stop the drug, I would always come back down. And eventually I was looking for something more permanent. So after five years, he went to India to try to find a guru. And what he found was that it was meditation and these peace states, this kind of loving kindness state that would help him find this sensation more eternally. And he said, knowing what I know now, you don't need psilocybin or hallucinogens or psychoactive substances to find that feeling because those are chemically induced. And meditation done the right way can give something similar. For many of us, just doing 20 minutes a day of solitude can be the thing that connects us back to ourselves. It connects us to our intuition or gut instincts. That solitude, not only gives your heart a little bit of peace, but connects you back to yourself. And it is the remedy that is desperately and sorely lacking for so many of us in our modern day lives. So spend 20 minutes a day in solitude. Don't have enough to be alone. You can be in a cafe, just looking out the window, breathing, thinking about life, or playing with your dog. But find that window of peace and it will open up a different dimension in life, I can promise you. That's what I have for you today, guys. Don't forget, I've actually released a brand new online healing library programs on how to heal yourself with traditional Chinese medicine as opposed to these videos being sponsored by some spammy supplements I don't believe in that probably won't help you anyway. I'm launching a series of online programs to help. The first one, Introduction to Healing with Traditional Chinese Medicine, has just opened up. And there's a link below the video pinned comment if you want to check that out. And then I also have another related video for a few simple daily practices you can do for your self-healing right here.